All right, Ronan and MMA, welcome back to the channel. Now, in today's video, we're going to formally cover the John Jones situation. We are also, though, first going to cover Jesse on Fire's coverage. I just hit my mic of the John Jones situation because, in my opinion, Jesse on Fire has gone to extreme lengths, for whatever reason, to defend John Jones, which is kind of in line with the stuff Jesse on Fire does, right? This is the same guy that defended Pat Barry, okay, based on a single person's uh, accounting of the story when it came to his relationship with Rose Namajunas and Matt Mitrione, who is a friend, by the way, completely biased source, okay? Also the same guy that defended tooth and nail Logan Paul up until it was no longer popular to do so uh, when it came to the whole Dylan Dana situation. So we're going to cover his coverage on this. He says a ton of stupid things. We're going to cover some of New Mexico's law when it comes to some of the things that John Jones has been charged with. Okay. We are also going to cover some of the things that John Jones has already admitted to himself. I'm going to address a bunch of the arguments that I keep seeing from individuals who are defending John Jones. I understand that most of you who like John Jones are going to come in here and call me a hater or racist or what have you, which is exactly, by the way, what Jesse on Fire has done. Okay. He has accused the woman with no evidence whatsoever of being racist, okay? And we're going to get to that later, but unbelievable from Jesse on Fire, a guy who would typically call out people race baiting, is over here crying, I just did it again, dude, crying racism with literally no evidence, but what can you expect from a two-time Obama voter if we are being honest, okay? So I'm going to press play on this video. I will pause it at certain moments. I will skip ahead to certain moments, and I'm going to give my opinion on it, and then we will go from there so let's get to it right away 149 in his video and this is the first unbelievably stupid thing that he says she charged him with assault okay she charged him with assault and he never touched her once never even acted like he was gonna touch her the phone snatching thing okay he, he charged her with assault and he never even touched her once now i don't know what what it is okay assault and battery are not necessarily the same thing people conflate assault with battery all the time assault does not actually require a physical altercation to take place especially not in new mexico and i will pull that up for you right now now this is the new mexico uh criminal code for assault and if what she claims is true i'm not saying it's true now i am more inclined to side with her by the way because in my opinion john jones has absolutely fucking zero credibility okay i am never going to take john jones's word at face value that's just point blank period okay i don't care if the other person involved is a woman with a stripper name or a dude whose name is michael or some bullshit i would side with them almost every single time unless some evidence comes out to the contrary because in my opinion john jones's word as i said means fucking nothing now if the threat that he levied okay Indirect or direct does not fucking matter. Let us read, okay? From section B onwards, any unlawful act, threat, or menacing conduct which causes another person to reasonably believe that he or she, in this case, is in danger of receiving an immediate battery or, section C, the use of insulting language towards another impugning his or her, in this case, honors, delicacy, or reputation, whoever commits assault is guilty of a misdemeanor. Now, in my opinion, if what she claims is true, B and C are absolutely met here. Absolutely. And I don't think it's fucking arguable. Okay. Now you cannot like this law. I don't fucking like this law. I think it's way too vague, way too broad. And this is an, a, a state in the United States of America, which is the country on the face of the, the, the country on this planet that has the best free speech laws bar fucking none bar none, not even close. Okay. However, as much as I love the first amendment, it does not actually protect certain things you cannot utter threats you cannot defame somebody you cannot incite violence okay so it is not an absolute right if you threaten someone in new mexico you have committed assault now i hear a lot of people talking about the whole house in his house situation we're going to get to that a little bit later but it's also in my opinion an unbelievably stupid argument we're going to continue on from here and jump to two minutes ten seconds uh, of his video and hopefully we do not hit an ad because I do not have YouTube premium okay so we're gonna jump ahead right here now let's play the video like people were arguing me in the in the comments about oh oh you defending John Jones you're shilling for John are you out of your mind I'm shilling for John Jones are you you must be new to the channel dude <laughs> or just go search Jesse on fire John Jones and go see how I covered things when he behaved badly tell me I shill for John Jones I'm just okay dude let's fucking do that Jesse on fire let's fucking do that okay we're gonna jump too a video that Jesse on Fire uploaded when the full police report, by the way, this is not the initial report. This is after all the details, body cam footage and what have you came out with the situation where John Jones beat his wife. Let's do that, Jesse on Fire. You asked us, you challenged us. Let's fucking do it, okay? This is the video I'm talking about. Now, we are going to jump ahead 
two. You're gonna jump ahead to 40 seconds in this video. Let's see how Jesse on fire covers John Jones's poor behavior since he fucking challenged us to do so, okay? Let's press play. Like the default, like cliche guy. So it's like, it sounds like there was some physical stuff between John and his fiance. And you know, I think most people are like, oh, uh, well, geez, I guess we better, you know, uh, any man that puts a hand on a woman should go to the gas chamber. Like, okay, I'm not five years old, right? Like. I, I mean, I certainly agree a dude should never put a hand on a girl, but I'm also not five, so I can empathize with everybody involved, including... Okay, including... John, because... Including John. Okay, now, Jesse on Fire wants you guys to know real bad that he's a real empath, okay, guys? He can empathize with anybody, even a dude, six foot four, giant human who beat the shit out of his wife uh, and reportedly in front of his children, okay? Jesse on Fire, he, he can empathize with them. He doesn't want to take the NPC... Uh, he doesn't want to have the NPC take of just, oh, a, a man that beats a woman should go in a gas chamber. That is like reducing an argument down to its absolute absurd and straw man level. I don't, I didn't see a whole lot of people saying that. I saw people saying that he should be fucking arrested, right? Because he beat his wife. But Jesse on Fire wants you guys to know that he's a true empath. And even though John beat his wife, he is going to go on to defend it. Okay. Now I wanted to. It sounds like he's really going through some shit here, man. Sounds like he's really going through some shit here, man. Unfucking believable, dude. Every person on the planet goes through some shit, my guy. But guess what, dude? Most of us don't have fucking eight figures in the bank, okay? Most of us aren't the light heavyweight and heavyweight champion of the world, right? We're all going through shit, right? Most dudes don't beat the fuck out of their wife in front of their kids. It just is what it is, okay? Now, I'm going to jump ahead to 248 in this video to show some more. Jesse on fire being hard on John Jones when he behaves poorly. Okay, we're gonna go to 301. So he fought the cops. He smashed his head into their patrol car and left like this huge dent in the patrol car. And it, it, like the, the, the way they make him sound in the report is crazy. So he's gonna- The way they make him sound in the report is crazy. Yeah, dude. Or is it that he's fucking crazy? Right? We have so many accounts of John Jones's behavior when he is intoxicated, which, by the way, is something that he admitted that he was during this entire altercation. But Jesse on Fire just says the report makes him sound crazy. Makes him sound crazy. Right? There is body cam footage, dude. This is this goes to Jones. As I said, this goes to Jones behavior while intoxicated. We know what he's like, dude, when he has to deal with authority or even a woman. Dude, he has a pattern of behavior, which, by the way, when you were in court. If you have prior uh, offenses that are not related, okay, to the offense that you were being charged with, a judge or a judge, like, they can't use that shit against you. There has to be uh, enough similarities. There are exceptions, right? If you have, if you show a pattern, if you have, like, a signature crime that you commit, like, oh, I don't know, dude, causing harm to fucking women, okay, then they absolutely can. Or at the very least, dude, us in the court of public opinion who are not, we don't have to abide by the rules of the court can use it to assess John Jones's credibility, okay? I don't fucking get it, dude. Like, if he's gonna act this way with dudes who have the power to actually lock him away, he's gonna act this way with cops, threaten them, say he's gonna get out of the handcuffs and beat the shit out of them, smash his head on the cop car. Wh you know, why the fuck would we not expect him to act that way with somebody who has way less power than that, right? And, and this is, Jesse on Fire in his other video that we were just covering plays a video of John Jones drunk at a comedy club as if this is like a good representation of what he's like when he's drunk. Now, by the way, I think that hurts John's case. If he gets drunk to that point, he's not going to remember shit properly. And a judge would take somebody else's word over what happened uh, uh, b before he took the word of a fucking blackout drunk guy. Okay, now. But the level, the, the body cam footage, in my opinion, is a good representation of what he's like when he's drunk. And also the fact that he beat his wife when he was drunk. Also the fact that he hit a pregnant lady with his fucking car while he was drunk, right? All the times he's been unbelievably violent while he was drunk. I think, in my opinion, that's a good representation. But anyways, let's jump ahead to five minutes and one second in this video. Whatever, but John, they said that he was alternating from completely flipping out on them, like screaming at them. And then he would just start crying, like crying and then flip out. Then he'd start joking around with them. And then he was like alternating between these huge emotional swings and... Oh, really? Oh, does he jump between emotional swings? Does John Jones go from angry to fucking crying and screaming racism to the cops, by the way, and then go to joking around with them? Is that what he does? Kind of like how he could absolutely threaten a fucking woman in his house. And then by the time she's leaving, he's high-fiving her. The guy is clearly fucking bi, tri, fucking quadruple polar. I don't know, dude, especially when he drinks. So the fact that we have evidence of him acting this way while intoxicated, going from screaming mad, 
threatening the cops, crying, crying about racism because he got arrested for beating his fucking wife, okay? And then also go to joking around with the cops, in my opinion, is a good, that's a good pattern to see. And then we can apply that to future incidences, okay? To future incidences. Now let's jump ahead to 624, and this is going to be the last clip in this video. We will get back to the original video eventually. This might be a long video, and I do apologize for that, but I want to cover this in a lot of detail. And I think that Jesse on Fire said a lot of stupid fucking things and also contradicted himself a lot. Partially also because if it's a dude, you would actually attack them. You know, like if you ever get that mad, you if you get that mad at a dude, you're gonna fight them. And when it's a girl that you're in a relationship with, you're not, I mean, you're not gonna attack them. I mean, even if John did elbow her or something like that, consider what he could do to her if he really wanted to hurt her, okay? Like, I'm it's not that bad, boys. It's not that bad. You know, maybe he elbowed her, maybe he punched her, maybe he grabbed her hair or, or whatever it is. But imagine if John Jones actually wanted to hurt her. So because he didn't go full fucking war, war machine and, and beat her half to death, you know, he, he didn't really attack her, boys. This is how Jesse on Fire covers John Jones' bad behavior, okay? So when he is upset that people are calling him a shell for John Jones, like, a fucking what, dude? Your history is god-awful. You might have gone harder in other videos, maybe, right? But this is a video when all of the horrible details of that case came out, and this is your response to that? This is your response. You want to be an empath, and you feel for John Jones because he's clearly going through some shit, okay? You also think that it's not, at, you know, he could have killed her if he wanted to. Also, you know, the, I, he's got all these fucking crazy personalities when he's drunk, but we somehow can't imagine that that would happen sometime in the future. Unfucking believable. Let's get back to the original video. And I know that I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but I felt like that fit in there at a good moment. Now, we are going to jump ahead to 3 minutes 39 seconds of this video, okay? She took a thing that he said out of context where he said, don't come to my house early in the morning when people, strangers show up at my house, people get killed. I mean, it's not the best thing to say, you know, it's actually <laughs> a fucking idiotic thing to say. It's a, it's a completely idiotic thing to say, actually. And if people want to argue with me that's a threat, okay, fine. It's a threat. Dude. Yeah. He was threatening. I mean, that's, he wasn't saying I'll kill you. Okay. He wasn't saying I'll kill you. He was saying when people show up at my house in the morning, they get killed. That is not a direct threat at her right then. Okay. So this dude just unironically made a fucking out of context argument. First of all, motherfucker. You don't know the context, okay? Because it was a conversation between these two people in John Jones's fucking house. You don't know the context. You have no idea if it was out of context. She took that out of context, okay? People that show up at my house this early at 4 fucking p.m., by the way, end up dead, all right? Out of context. Jesus fucking Christ. This guy has spent way too much time in the lake of rot, okay? Unbelievable. Also... These fucking whack jobs, bro. It, like, 4 p it was not early in the morning. I feel like John Jones said that as a way to, like, obfuscate. Like, if, I, if it's early in the morning and I can prove that I was confused or I thought they were intruders or what have you, then I can, I can kind of get away with threatening them, okay, before asking them to leave my property, right? Which is not what he did, by the way, and we're going to get to that later. But 4 p.m., bro. We're talking almost evening. Why did they come so fucking early? They were let in the home. They were led in the home. And as we went over earlier with New Mexico's uh, criminal code for assault, okay, it does not need to be a direct threat to make this claim, right? It doesn't need to be. You need, and, and he says something so fucking unbelievably stupid again that we we're going to get to, but Jesus Christ, dude, we're going to jump ahead to eight minutes, 45 seconds of this video. All right, here we are, 845 of this video. We're going to play it until 1919. I, I cut out of my video yesterday this long segment where I was talking about how it 100% is assault for a man to snatch a phone from a woman, okay? That's where I started yesterday, okay? I started there. And when I read that John picked her phone up off of a desk that she put it on, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, well, that's different, you know? That's completely different. She put her phone down, he picked it up and started filming. That's not the same thing at all. And how'd she get her phone back? Obviously, he gave it back. You know what I mean? So obviously give it back. Okay. So number one, that wouldn't be fucking assault. Yeah, that wouldn't be assault. Okay. Also read the fuck dude. How the fuck is this guy covered this entire thing without looking up what assault means in New Mexico? This blows me away, dude. That's not assault, right? Again, I will go back to the New Mexico law. Any unlawful act, threat, or menacing conduct which causes another person to reasonably believe that he or she is in danger of receiving immediate battery. Snatching your phone could maybe be that, but that's not inherently assault this fucking guy, dude, okay? That's number one. Number two, 
it's okay if somebody steals your property as long as they give it back after. So if some kid steals your fucking bike, okay, for a few days, but he brings it back, even with it with it, without your consent, all good, dude. He just borrowed it. How the fuck did you get it back? He had to have brought it back. You know, the chain might be off, the, the tire might be flat, but hey, dude, he brought it back. Like, are you f are you kidding me right now? You can steal somebody's property perfectly fine as long as you give it back to them. That's what he's saying here. Unbelievable unbelievably fucking stupid we're gonna jump ahead about 20 seconds here to 9 39 on the clock okay again you want to say oh you always oh, said the thing about that he people get killed in his house so it is a threat okay well he didn't say i'm gonna do this to you he said Pete, this happens to people so maybe it's a threat maybe it's not you want to throw him in jail you want to charge him with assault for that this is the combat sports community that's assault to you like you would call the this is the combat sports world no the fuck it isn't what does this have anything to do with anything he's an athlete point blank period these people are contracted out by okay the nfl the nba mlb and nascar and many others right but we're supposed to have a special set of rules when it comes to a person like john jones because he's a fucking fighter this is not the fight sports world at this point in time this is the drug agency collection fucking whatever world okay when he's at home not in the cage not training and they show up to do a drug test it's not the combat sports world it's the drug testing world it's fucking so simple this is unbelievably retarded he's acting like these people are on their only job is to deal with ufc fighters this woman has probably dealt with so many giant fucking athletes before have we ever heard anything like this ever dude have we ever heard anything like this ever no the fuck we haven't okay i'm gonna jump ahead to 1348 on the clock she even deals with cte riddled fucking football players and they, we've never heard an accusation like this before. So let's let's press play from here. It should be noted that at the time, Jones had no shirt on and, and his size compared to Crystal. So what? He can't help how big he is and he had his shirt off because he's working out in his garage. Like this is one of the, this, honestly, I cannot believe I'm going to say this. I can't believe I'm going to say this. This sounds like a racist fucking bitch to me, right? <laughs> She's racist, guys. Okay, let's go on. This big black man was... You know, he looked agitated, you know? He's big and he's black. I, like, honestly, I, I, I have never accused anyone of racism before, especially not in a situation where I don't know for sure. But this is so ludicrous, the way she's writing this, that I honestly think I'm like, the fact that he's his shirt off and look how big he is, who fucking cares? And if that's what we're talking about, maybe it's like, look at how big and how black he is. It's a fucking joke, dude. This shit's so... <sighs> Jesse on fire. The only fucking person in this situation that added race to it was you. You fucking fake tanning, poly D, fire crotch looking motherfucker, unhinged accusations of racism with no basis for it whatsoever. John Jones can't control how big he is, okay? But he can control the way that he acts knowing how fucking big he is, okay? He's a giant. Of course, that elevates the level of intimidation, especially after he has threatened them. Okay, and look, you can say that it's not a direct threat. It doesn't fucking matter. We went over New Mexico law. We did. Okay, I don't like the law, as I said, but if we're going by the law, that's what happened, dude. Okay, if, if what she said is true, that's what happened. I just can't believe that he's race baiting in this situation. It's actually pathetic. Okay, John Jones didn't even do that, which John Jones is a master race baiter. Okay, unbelievable. And then he, he tries to use the fact that he's never done this before. As like, well, you should you should take this into consideration more. This should weigh more on your mind because I never do this. I never do this. But to me, this sounds like a racist bitch, okay? Which is fucking unbelievable. This is the exact same thing that people said about the city bike Karen who was absolutely in the right in that situation and was about to have a bike stolen from fuck a group of black dudes, okay? They painted her out to be a white bitch nurse racist. This is exactly like the chick who freaked out in the fucking dog park because some dude had posted on Facebook even admitting to it he was trying to kidnap her dog with fucking treats because her dog shouldn't have been off leash, okay? She got called a racist bitch. She lost her fucking job over that shit okay and jesse on fire is here doing it to this lady who this is also a guy who is super fucking defensive of people's livelihoods you should not go after someone's livelihoods he's openly said in this video multiple times she should not get she should not have this job she should be fired and now he's accusing her of racism which oftentimes ends or results in mobs going after 
the person's jobs. Unfucking believable, dude. We're crying racism about one of the, the, no, not one of the, the most privileged fighter on the face of the fucking planet. There is not a fighter in history that has gotten more privileged than John Jones. Not a fucking one. He got the rules changed by USADA because he could not stop pissing hot, dude. This It's unfucking believable. Unbelievable. We're going to jump ahead to 15 minutes and one second on the clock. Which we were almost there anyways. Crystal stated that after that, Jones had made the statements about suing them and put her phone in his pocket. Crystal told me she asked for the phone back and he refused and got her face stating, why you people come so early? Do you know what happens to people who come to my house? They end up dead. By the way, I've seen a lot of people kind of screwing up the timeline on this. Now I've read the police report. I've read all the articles on the police report. The timeline seems to be they were led into the house. Okay. By somebody at John Jones's house. They were led into the garage. Then they called John to notify him that they were here somebody let us in we're in the garage we need to do a drug test they were not intruders okay and we're gonna go over that in a little bit but i just wanted to point that out because i see a lot of people fucking with the timeline then the guy goes to uh stand with john while he pisses for their drug test john drunk at 4 p.m somehow can't take a piss a little strange but either fucking way they come back john jones is offered a blood sample by the woman and at that point, he gets angry. And that is when he says what he says about people that show up at my house this early end up dead. Okay. So the fact that John Jones even said those words, in my opinion, proves his state of mind, how fucking intoxicated he was that at 4 p.m. You, for some reason, think it's early in the morning. Okay. But either way, let's move on or we'll, we'll continue on with this clip because he says something unbelievably fucking stupid here. Okay, dude, that is, I don't, okay. I don't care what anyone says. That is not a direct threat at her, dude. Doesn't need, doesn't need to be a direct threat, but either way. That is not a direct, if you want to call it a threat, that's fine. You want to put him in jail for saying that when he's drunk? Come on. No, he's drunk, come on. Crystal said she felt afraid, her heart was pounding, was terrified at that moment, and Jones was less than a foot away. Okay, well, how you feel is not a criminal act, dude. This might be the most retarded thing I've ever heard him fucking say in my life, dude. A person's feeling or perception of a situation is absolutely one of the most relevant fucking things in almost in so many instances of crime. Are you fucking kidding me? Right? Maybe the way, dude, I, the reason that Kyle Rittenhouse rightly got off on self-defense, okay, after sh killing two people and, and blowing the bicep off of another fucking bitch, okay? The reason he got off on that was because he felt his life was in danger. That is how this shit works. How you have made a person feel absolutely fucking lutely is relevant and absolutely matters when it comes to a criminal charge, okay? Because if Kyle Rittenhouse's life, if he was not in fear for his life, if he, don't, if he did not feel like his life was in danger and he killed those people, they would not be able to claim self-defense. You have to have a reasonable fear for your safety or your life or what have you in order for these things to be relevant. They are, how the fuck, dude, they might be the dumbest fucking thing I've heard in my life from this guy how you feel is not a criminal no how you specifically feel is not a criminal act but it can determine one for the other person again kyle rittenhouse would not have gotten off if he did not feel like his life was in danger that is the only fucking reason okay and rightfully so he killed those two people he maimed that other one and he was 100 percent in the right in that situation and jesse on fire was somebody that defended him and he's here saying that how you feel in a situation that could potentially become violent doesn't matter is fucking brain dead brain dead okay we're gonna move on now but first what i want to do okay i see a lot of people bringing up uh property rights in america how how can you get mad at somebody for threatening somebody on their own property right which to me is like okay dude first of all there's a few steps that go into this and don't take them one by one take them as a whole okay now john jones has signed a contract right that allows drug collectors drug sample collectors to show up at his house his gym anywhere at any given time that they want okay point blank period now when you sign a contract it oftentimes you do sign some of your rights away. Now, you could legally contest them in court, right? But I would imagine that the UFC's contracts are written in a way because they are such a fucking profitable, huge, successful business that they would hold up in court. If you leave a company and you sign an NDA in America, you may have the First Amendment right to freedom of speech, but you have signed away your right to say certain things in that NDA. The same way that John Jones has signed a right away to have people show up at his house, right? Now, they were let in. They were not intruders. I'm going to bring up 
this right here. Now, the castle doctrine in New Mexico, right? Based on the old English saying a man's home is his castle, the circumstances that must prevail to allow the castle doctrine to justify killing an intruder are the following. So in other words, for you to defend your home and your property, these things need to be met. Now, someone forcefully and unlawfully entered your home, case fucking closed, okay? That's not what happened. That's not what happened here, right? They were let into the fucking home. They called him to let him know. He didn't ask them to leave. If he was if he was to refuse this drug test and tell these people, I want you to leave my home right now. I don't want you here. I do not consent to you being here. I am not going to piss in that cup. I'm not going to allow a blood sample. And they refused to leave. And then he followed up with the threat. Fine. I would have no fucking problem with that. Okay. He can take the penalty that he will get from the UFC for, for refusing a drug test. But legally, in my opinion, he, he's in the right. Okay. I don't want you in my home. I don't consent to you being here. Leave. And if they don't leave, then threaten them. That's not what the fuck happened. He threatened them because they wanted to take a blood sample because he was unable to piss. He at no point in this altercation asked them to leave his home. So bringing up property rights, in my opinion, is absolutely and completely totally fucking irrelevant and has no weight here whatsoever. As I said in the beginning, he has signed certain rights away, signing a contract with the UFC, as many people do, NDAs and, this, and, and, and things like that, right? Also, they were led into his house legally, they had notified him they were there. He knew they were there. He came and he didn't get angry until they offered a blood sample because for whatever reason, a guy drunk at 4 p.m. couldn't take a fucking piss. Okay, unbelievable. Now, we're going to move on because Jesse on fire race baiting, you know, I was a little surprised, but then I thought, ah, John Jones fans do this on a regular fucking basis. Okay, so let's go over a little bit of that before we get into the facts of the case. Now, this is John Jones. This is a very famous uh, situation here, okay? There's also a clip of Nina Drama asking him about him, asking him about it, pardon me. And John Jones uh, in that interview attempts to play it off as like, yeah, it was silly. I was being dumb or I, I didn't realize what the fuck, blah, 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 blah. But when it did happen, that's not his reaction at all. He doubled, tripled, quadrupled the fuck down claiming racism. And we're going to go over that right now. And they decide to name the jeans Black Negro. Base jeans. Wow. Wow, right, girls? <laughs> Literally half my friends are, quote, Hispanic, and I'm pretty sure every single one of them, even the ones who don't read English, well could have found those black jeans. Bro, I live in British Columbia in Canada. There is, like, no fucking French speakers here at all. Every single product that we, by law, has to have French on it, okay? You're, you're New Mexico, bro. You're a new fucking... Anyways... I know it seems silly to some people, but none of the other jeans were labeled anything like that. I'll probably stop by tomorrow and make a video to show you an example. Hashtag corner the mall. So he's calling out the mall. <laughs> Let's continue. Okay. Next tweet is, I'm totally aware to say the word black or how to say the word black in Spanish. It's negro. Okay. I still feel like Hashtag Hollister's choice of words were insensitive and insulting. Call me sensitive if you want, but today I was totally insulted because they had the Spanish word for black on a pair of fucking jeans when you live in New Mexico. <sighs> no wonder Jesse on Fire, a John Jones fan, is, ra uh, John Jones fan is race baiting. Hollister, I'm disgusted with you guys. I'm sure you could have gotten way more creative than <laughs> Sucks I have to try to explain this to my daughters on Father's Day. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Hollister Company, I understand that Negro means black in Spanish, but this is bullshit and uncomfortable. Dude, get the fuck over yourself for Christ's sakes. It says it's in... Sp it's Spanish. It's Spanish. It's Spanish. What the fuck are you talking? He's doubling down. He, he quadrupled down in that situation. I don't understand it. It's clear. It's written in Spanish. This is not a, a, a fucking shot at black people, bro. You're in New Mexico. It has Spanish on it. I'm in British Columbia. We have French on everything. In every fucking province in Canada, even though you rarely run into somebody that speaks French. Okay, it's un unbelievable to me. And he gets, you know, he says multiple times, I'm, I'm insulted. Whatever. Call me offensive if you want. If you want. Blah, 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 blah. Now, we are going to play. Okay. We are going to play him doing another race baiting because why the fuck not? Okay. Cause it's fun in my opinion. And it shows why somebody like Jesse on fire would actually be doing this. 
Here we are at two minutes and six seconds of this arrest footage. Now, I could go over this entire footage because it is absolutely fucking unhinged and in my opinion proves that John Jones's state of mind is a violent fucking psychopath who goes from super angry to sad to joking in a matter of minutes when he's under arrest. So I don't understand why a fucking high five exonerates him from anything when we didn't see his behavior up until that point. Now, I'm going to press play. I came from my Hall of Fame ceremony and I'm black. I'm just going to throw this out there. He sounds unbelievably zesty when he's intoxicated. Okay, not saying anything, but unbelievably zesty. Friends, and I did nothing to you. So he's crying here, right? But before he was super angry, but let's go on. I'm not, it was at a ceremony for the Hall of Fame. I'm not going to answer your questions no more. You Oh, hang me. Hurt me. Hang me. Hurt me. And kill me. Kill me. John Jones is to become the next St. George Floyd. John Jones is going to become the next St. George Floyd. He thinks he's going to be hung, hurt, and killed. Simply, why? Why would he think this? What did I do? Thank you. Am I hot? A black man can't drink? And getting elected to the Hall of Fame? And now... It is not 1895, John Jones. You are not in trouble because you are a black man who's drinking. You are in trouble because you beat the shit out of your fucking wife and your daughter asked the hotel clerk or whatever, dude, to call the cops. You degenerate fucking retard, okay? I do not understand how anybody defends this guy. He is a horrible, in my opinion, human being. And when he gets in trouble, he does not take any account accountability for his actions. And this is why he never changes. This is why at the age of damn near fucking 40, we are still having accusations like this arise, right? This is not a person who is going to change. When Daniel Cormier said, John Jones is rotten to his core. You make mis you do not make mistakes over and over and over and over again. And John Jones, who said, who says, who says, buddy, Jesus fucking Christ. Unbelievable. So just to show this was just, you know, Makes perfect sense why somebody like Jesse on Fire, who is defending John Jones, would cry racism because that is in fact what John Jones does on a regular fucking basis. Okay, now let's go over the facts that John Jones has actually established himself. Now, he says he was partying, right? A birthday party at his house. The reason why he brought that up, because it did seem a little odd. People were like, what the fuck? Nobody accused you of partying. The reason he brought that up, in my opinion, is because... He was intoxicated. So he's, he, he, this is the way his mind works. Because in my opinion, he's a fucking psychopath. Or maybe a sociopath. Who knows? Very manipulative. As opposed to just saying, yes, I was I was intoxicated. He's trying to justify it. Okay? Immediately. Yeah, I was, I was having a birthday party. And I think it's perfectly normal to do so in the comfort of your own home. That's what he's getting at. Okay? He was intoxicated. Okay? Anyways. Um, he admits he did get angry with the sample collectors, right? You might not think it's a big deal, but again, it, it does matter, right? Based on New Mexico law. Again, you might not like the fucking law. I don't either, dude. But guess what? I'm not a part of the like New Mexico legislature. I don't have the power to change this law. If you live in New Mexico, fucking, you know, bitch about it, whatever. He did take her phone, right? Which he admits to as well. He did say that he, he said he never threatened to sue because he doesn't speak like that. But immediately after said that he did threaten the guy that he was going to sue him. Okay, so he was clearly aggressive. He admits it. Something I want to point out. Not a single time in any of John Jones's statements has he actually denied the allegation. You know, um, he's been as careful with his words as I think his brain can comprehend. Although I think he has said too much already, right? I don't think that he made these statements with the advice from a lawyer. I think that if he spoke to a lawyer, the lawyer would say, don't say fucking shit. Hold your horses. I'll deal with it. Whereas John Jones goes, nope, I'm going to jump on Twitter and fucking starts tweeting, right? He should not have admitted that he was intoxicated, even though they would have found that out because they got a blood sample from him. Uh, he didn't need to admit that he was angry or frustrated with the sample collectors and that he was swearing and getting upset because of unprofessionalism and what have you, right? He didn't like none of this shit, but he's admitted all of this right? It's, listen, as I said in the opening, there is evidence that could come out that would change my opinion. As of right now, I'm leaning towards John Jones did it. You want to know why? Because he's a piece of shit. Okay. And when you were in court, 
Now, I understand people are saying there's no evidence of this altercation. There's no video footage. The only video footage we have is her giving a high five, a high five on the way out, which to me means absolutely fucking nothing. Okay. When you go to court, now I don't even think this is going to make it to trial. I think this is going to get handled right uh, outside of court. But witness testimony is direct evidence, right? Even DNA, shit like this, whatever, is circumstantial evidence. Um, testimony is direct evidence. If you were a judge, I want you to ask yourself, you know, maybe you're somebody that just hates women, especially with the name Crystal, as I said, who knows? Just imagine they're both fucking aliens, dude. You know, keep, keep, keep the, the gender out of it. If you had a guy with the criminal history, you know, the background that John Jones has giving a testimony, and then you have a woman who, as of right now that I'm aware of, has no transgressions even close or similar to John Jones whatsoever. fucking ever. If you were a judge, if I was a judge, I'll just speak personally. I would 100% take the word of that woman over John Jones. That's not even fucking questionable, in my opinion. You have got one guy who time and time again has shown what a garbage human being he is. Also has established a pattern of abusing women. Point blank fucking period. Okay? Point blank period. Also uses his race as a defense. Uses his CTE as a defense. Why he can't fucking say the alphabet. Is a professional victim, in my opinion. And again, We'll just summarize briefly. Assault in New Mexico. He meets these two. He just does. If what she said is true, right? Which, oh, by the way, again, he has not denied that. Then he meets the definition of assault, which, again, I don't fucking agree with. Okay, it's too broad, too vague. They should change it. They should alter it a little bit, okay? But he does. Now, he was at home, though, okay? Again, he has signed a contract that allows these people to show up at his house. Therefore... They are not forcefully or unlawful intruders. They did not forcefully or unlawfully enter his home. If they did, have at her, right? Fucking blast them, you know? Even though in New Mexico, they use the castle doctrine kind of on a base, like uh, case by case. They don't just have a flat out fucking whatever. But he doesn't meet any of these. You reasonably believe, uh, believe that the commission of the violent felony, not necessarily murder, was about to occur. You reasonably believe that you must kill the intruder. Like, not we don't have to go that far. But just to even threaten them, right? You don't, they don't meet that. They were let in the house. He knew they were there. He only threatened them because he was upset at the idea of taking a blood sample. Okay, that's it. That's all it was. So I see people fucking up the timeline, 4 p.m., not 4 a.m., okay? I see people saying that he threatened them, you know, either at the beginning when he opened the door as like a joke or some shit or fucking, it was because he was upset. He didn't want to take a blood sample. He does not have, he meets it, right? Now, it is what it is, dude. You know, you can be upset that you can go to jail for words. Take it up with the New Mexico legislature, guys. Okay? You know? But I get the First Amendment doesn't cover everything. So it is what it is. Even though the United States of America, which I, I don't live in, but I wish I did, by far is the best country on the planet when it comes to that shit. There are exceptions. There are rules. You do and can sign some of your rights away when you sign certain contracts. And I am not inclined to feel bad for a dude making millions of fucking dollars because he's got to get drug tested. Okay, I just don't. I don't feel bad even a little bit. Okay? And I and again, shit could come out, fair enough. But until then, I'm inclined to believe that John Jones is an absolute dirtbag piece of shit who did in fact do this because he has displayed a pattern of this behavior many of times in the past. That's it, dude. Like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.